Hi, I thought I'd shoot a series of videos about a complete setup guide for remote battery management. Um, I've got a um, just this temporary setup. This whole setup is eventually going to go on my boat, but I've got a 300 watt um, solar panel out there on a nice bright sunny day here in uh, northern Ohio. Um, in the uh, month of early March and I'm generating about 375 watts. It's been a nice bright sunny day all day today. Um, but um, what I have is, is uh, there's been a few folks on the online that have um, recommended this idea of putting your uh, lithium ion phosphate um, batteries in a milk crate. So that's what I've got going on here. And uh, I've got a uh, protective cover on here. I was a little nervous about shorting out anything to the battery when I was um, working on it. I didn't want to drop a tool or USB cable or anything else on there that would uh, cause a short to ground. So I put a cover over the top of it. And what I did is these are... Um, Four longer bolts here in the corners that I just got stainless steel bolts that I just got from the local hardware store and I ground off the heads of them so just basically make studs studs out of them and I've seen folks recommend this on all the terminals um, these prismatic lithium ion batteries the lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries um, Somewhat known for stripping out the terminal lugs on here, so some folks recommend putting these posts in, but I just put them on the four corners and then and then um, set it up to put a cover over the top of it so it didn't accidentally drop anything. So let me explain a little bit what I've got in this uh, milk crate. Um, I've got a a um, a BMS uh, unit that I have here. It's a 120 amp version. This is a DYKB Smart BMS um, 4S 120 amps. Um, it comes in a bunch of different names. Um, JDB or JDB Tools, uh, Zozang, um, if I pronounce that right, Overkill Solar, and perhaps a few other names. Um, but that's the BMS system, and then I've got um, two, kind of difficult to see, but uh, two different solutions in there for um, battery uh, monitoring systems. They're basically two current shunts that are in there. Um, one, of, one of them is a, a Juntech VAT1300, and I've shot a whole long series of videos on specifically on the Juntech. Um, the other one is a, Send, uh, a Sendine uh, SFP101 EVB um, that I got from Sendine, and um, I'll go into more details about that. And then, um, what else do we have here in the box? There's a, there's a USB uh, hub in there, and that's basically got some uh, RS-232, and uh, RS-485 and RS-422 um, ports on there for talking to the different hardware. And what I intend to do is basically, um, in today's video, go through setting things up. And um, what, I, what I have is a Raspberry Pi 4 um, that is um, monitoring the uh, state of the battery charge and that all this all the data gets logged into a influx database and from the influx database you can then uh, display the data inside the influx database using um, flexions pretty bad but I'll, I'll do a uh, remote I'll, I'll do um, show in more details on, on the computer itself, but basically this is the uh, Grafana's um, to display the data. So you could display the data, you know, locally from, from your own local area network or actually access it from, from anywhere on the World Wide Web um, and get some quite detailed information about what's going on. 
Um, the other thing that I have on here is I have a um, EP Ever uh, MPPT Maximum Power Point Tracking uh, Solar Controller, and um, and I actually plan on hooking a number of other things up to this. This whole setup is going on my boat, so I plan on hooking up some some of the uh, boat instruments to it, uh, specifically navigation. And and right now, if you see over here, I have a um, a um, the a uh, Airmar uh, weather station hooked up to it right now. Um, and I have that up and working too, so I'll, I'll and later on go into a separate set of videos on that. But I plan on doing not only the weather station, but um, also like uh, uh, AIS, uh, which is a, a, an AIS receiver, which is a um, marine collision avoidance system, and, uh, and some other things to hook up to it as well. A, a depth sounder and um, also possibly a auto helm or autopilot if you want to call it. So um, see if there's any other details I should talk about in here. Um, this whole thing is um, pretty much standalone. I've got it running on Ethernet right now but there's no reason it couldn't run on uh, Wi-Fi. Um, there's a power adapter on here to go from uh, you know, the, the 12 volt battery set up to the 5 volts uh, to power the Raspberry Pi. And uh, that's pretty much it for the hardware that's inside the box here. And uh, next I'll go and um, show you a little bit about the kind of data that you can grab with this on Grafana and then go specifically into exactly how to set up the Raspberry Pi, how to install the Influx database how to install Grafana, um, and how to configure um, everything to uh, be able to grab and log all this data. So anyway, um, that'll be coming up next. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the results you can get out of uh, doing this remote battery management um, monitoring. Um, so here I've got uh, Grafana up and running, and um, you can see the different uh, instruments that I'm, I'm monitoring. The, EP, the EP ever is the um, the solar controller, so you can measure the um, current going in and out of the battery through here. You can actually measure the the voltage with it. You can measure the um, you can measure actually a number of things. It's got uh, you can measure the solar power, solar current, solar voltage load current, load voltage, battery current, battery voltage, temperature, um, the remote probe and internal pressure, internal temperature of it. Um, so quite a bit of information you can get out of that. Um, and uh, similarly, the, some of the other things, the, the, the smart BMS, you can do much of the same thing. Um, measure the uh, current uh, voltage um, you can measure the, um, it's got two, two temperature probes, one internal um, and one remote for uh, measuring the battery temperature. And um, the, the um, BMS unit can also display um, what's called state of charge. Um, and it has some quirky things about it. Um, you can see here it was measuring this, this state of charge and then it was, wasn't was really calibrated when the batteries got fully topped off and calibrated itself. And I'll go into more detail comparing different solutions for measuring state of charge. Um, they all have their pros and cons. Um, but that's the um, just touching on the BMS and then the same thing with the two current shunts that I have. Um, I have the um, Gentech uh, power shunt, um, which is also capable of measuring state of charge. Uh, the 
voltage and the current passing through it. So it also has a temperature probe and the uh, send, Sendine uh, battery management um, device, uh, much the same thing. Measure the um, state of charge, uh, voltage, current, uh, and it also has a uh, temperature probe. So here you can see, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at, um, you can see the solar power today um, as the um, sun started to come up, um, started getting some, you know, at late at night there was no power whatsoever. As the sun started coming up this morning, it was generating a few watts of power and then um, gradually throughout the day the power kept going up and up and up. Um, if you see this, this is why this is kind of interesting. You see some big jumps here. It, it uh, was was quite low and then jumped up suddenly and then jumped up suddenly again and then jumped up suddenly again. Um, it wasn't due to the fact that there were clouds in the sky or anything today. But today was a 100% clear day um, and as the sun was gradually coming more and more over head, he had obviously getting more and more power. But it's really just kind of an indication of uh, early on the um, MPPT function of the uh, EP ever apparently had was not kicked in. It's it's in whatever they call it a PWM mode or whatever. Um, not quite clear why it jumped from one to another suddenly, but you can get some more granularity of this if you look at the the current and the the, the voltage on that EP ever. So here um, there is no voltage throughout. There are no current throughout the night. No voltage throughout the night. Um, when the, when uh, the sun did start coming up this morning, it did, did come up to uh, some low, a voltage um, that wasn't really enough to charge it much. Um, you can see the current gradually was sneaking up through the course of the morning. And just the way I had the panel oriented on my um, back porch here, um, it was in the shade, it wasn't getting any direct sun. Um, and then, and then as, as time went on, um, suddenly it started getting started getting some sun and you can see the voltage um, popped up here and we started generating a little more power. What was interesting is it didn't start going into what the power, the tracking until um, later on in the day. So you can see suddenly when it switched from whatever you want to call it, PWM is, is what I hear it commonly called, which is pulse width modulation, it, it jumped into uh, the maximum power point tracking and when it jumped, um, you can see then we're all of a sudden we start cranking um, lots, lots of power out of the panel. Um, this goes to show you that probably during some of this portion anyway, um, if it, you know it's probably a weakness of that uh, EP ever controller, um, solar controller that's probably would benefit from jumping into maximum power point tracking sooner, um, and then. Uh, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, um, if you look further during the day, there was yet another jump um, as the panel got more direct sunlight on it. Um, it did have some shadows cast on it. And suddenly the shadows were, were getting knocked away. But that should have been a gradual um, trend in my mind. And you can see um, suddenly we had a jump from um, what was that, 168 watts here, 172 watts, um, and then it, it uh, jumped up quickly into the 200s, uh, eventually getting up to like 275 watts. Um, so, so again, if you if you look at the, um, the mo whatever mode it was in, kind of switched to a different uh, maximum power point here, and was actually able to get some more power out of it. So. Um, that's what's kind of beneficial of um, you know grabbing all this data and displaying it graphically. You can kind of see what's going on, and and you can see maybe by uh, you know who knows if we had if we maybe tweak the parameters of the the EP ever unit or maybe we had a different uh, brand. Maybe we could crank some more watts um, watt hours out of the thing through the course of the day. Um, but uh, what else do I want to touch on? Uh, some interesting stuff here. You get. Um, let's see how I bring 
this up here to full screen view. And, uh, it's 24 hours. So um, here you can see this is uh, measuring, this is from the uh, BMS, it's measuring the uh, battery voltage of, of all four batteries. Um, you can see the, the, um, the last, this battery here in orange kind of tracks a little differently than the, the other three. So again, kind of useful information to kind of keep track on, on uh, the, the four batteries um, that I have in my, my 4S uh, system here. And you can see this, this, this one kind of uh, consistently tracks a little different than the other three. Um, I bought these all at once. They'll have the same manufacturing, same manufacturer, same uh, decodes, everything else. But for whatever reason, um, this fourth battery here is just just not quite um, quite the same as the other three. And what else do I want to touch on? Um, that is basically it. I think um, what. I did want to discuss is um, maybe some of the differences between some of the solutions I have here. The um, like I said, they're all capable. The the um, EP Ever itself doesn't really have any state of state of charge tracking. It's not to say with this solution you couldn't code that in, so you could get that out of the EP Ever. It's certainly possible. But um, if, you, if you look at um, like right where we're at now, um, the battery is basically 100% topped off. Um, so there's, there's um, very little current flowing into or out of the battery. Um, but if you look at the, the um, capabilities of what everything's measuring, the EP ever is measuring right now um, like uh, 0.1 uh, amps of current. If you look at the uh, um, Sendine unit, it's measuring uh, 0.224 uh, amps of current um, going into the battery. If you look at the, um, where's the EP ever current? I miss it. Oh, that was the, that was the EP ever. Um, where's the Gen GenTech? GenTech voltage, GenTech current. So this is the GenTech uh, current shunt. And if you look at it, um, it's it's struggling to measure any any small amount of current. Um, so it's it's kind of alternating between um, whatever looks like it occasionally pops up for some amount of current. Otherwise, it's at zero. Now, if I back back out of this and look at, um, you know, when we were when we were at full current, it did a reasonable job of measuring um, large amounts of current, but it struggles with measuring a small amount of current. So I'll dive in. I'm going to dive into each each of these. I've I've covered the GenTech in a previous series of YouTube videos quite a bit, but I'll, I'll dive into the BMS and and dive into the EP Ever a little bit. I don't plan on touching the EP Ever much and then dive into the Send Sendine solution. Um, and uh, what else do we have here? You measure the, the, like I said, they all measure the um, battery temperature, in some cases the temperature of the modules themselves. And see things like the Gentex, you know, resolution is is very rough versus the all of the other guys have much finer um, uh, battery measurement capability. And that's basically it on the uh, EP ever. Um, now all of this data is being queried out of an influx database. And the way the data gets into the database is I use something called Node-RED. And if I pop here up here to Node-RED, I have um, these different setups for all the different instruments here. So here's, here's the BMS. Um, and basically, 
this is what gets fired if you look at this is this in an eject node and it's getting fired um, I think once every minute um, it's injecting this string of commands now I didn't reverse engineer this there's, there's some information on on the web about the protocol that the um, that the BMS uses and I basically um, looked at that and then cooked up um, a solution using Node-RED. But uh, Node-RED has this graphical user interface. You can basically drag and drop um, different nodes in here. And uh, you know this is injecting a string. It's injecting it to a serial port. And then it's basically processing that data, um, looking, for, looking for valid data, looking f that the checksum's correct. Um, so on and so forth, and finally formatting once once it has a complete packet of data, uh, and it actually actually does a couple queries here and then joins them together, formats it, and then it basically shoves it into the Influx database. And I have that same sort of thing going on for for um, for all the different things. This is the Sendine um, EVB. Um, something very similar that it's it's um, doing injects to to do queries. The uh, Gentuck shunt um, it's a little different. Um, I'm basically spying on what's going on between the uh, controller and the uh, the base shunt. And it's basically grabbing that uh, grabbing that uh, data um, once a minute. It just does a does a quick uh, snapshot of it. Um, the CP ever settings, um, I did not cook these up. These, these were off the internet. I'll provide a, a pointer as to where these are. Um, but um, much more uh, complicated, uh, EP ever uses this Modbus um, protocol and um, clearly much more complex, and I did not cook this up. And I did mention earlier that um, I, I plan on putting a lot of um, my boat's uh, navigation instrumentation and hooking it all up to here. Um, so this is the, um, the, the weather station. Um, and this is kind of nice. Um, it basically grabbing, um, grabbing the data off, off of the weather station, and this is somewhat complex of uh, flow. It actually actually um, does some baud rate detections um, on power up. The, the weather station comes up at a low baud rate. I think 1200 comes to mind, and then I think I, it's, uh, I bump it up to 38.4. Um, basically need to up the baud rate in order to um, add all of the additional information I want. And this flow does all that. It, it um, basically sets, tells the weather station how often I want data and what type of data I want. Um, and it's, that's all clearly documented, um, but um, this is a, a nice way of doing this. And then it actually takes all this data and uh, shoves it out through a um, TCP port. Um, and then I'd be able to um, fire up, I use OpenCPN um, to, to display that data. Um, yeah, you can see it shoves it out to TCP port 10110 um, to be able to display that data. So um, what I'm going to do here on this first uh, video, I just wanted a basic introduction of the hardware I had here and the um, software I have running on the Raspberry Pi. And um, what I'm going to do is dive into um, into detail how you uh, install and set up uh, Node-RED, and then how you install and set up Grafana. And um, down below in the in the comments, um, I can have uh, pointers to um, where you can download some of this um, setup information so you don't have to basically create this all from scratch. Um, you can import import these uh, Node-RED um, and the EP ever um, settings and then um, edit them from there. So, so that's what we're going to do next is talk a little bit about the, um, the Raspberry Pi 
and how to go about installing all of this and then um, I'll do a, basically a step-by-step -step from a scratch from a Raspberry Pi at the, the boot state all the way through displaying this data. And I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned it earlier, um, this data right now I'm looking at um, you know 192.168.1.5 that's 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 the local on the local area network but I can also access this data from anywhere on the internet um, it's just a matter of opening a port on your router and then um, you could be you know anywhere in the world and, and be able to access um, access this uh, Grafana and uh, look at the state of your batteries as to what's going on so Anyway, um, so we'll, we'll next dive into setting up the uh, Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to go through that uh, step by step, uh, somewhat accelerated, um, but down in the notes below I'll put in all the steps that you have to do um, in order to get everything set up. Okay. Okay, now let's quickly go through an overview of the Raspberry Pi and its setup. Um, I'm using this heat sink here that I grabbed off Amazon. Um, and uh, it seems to work pretty good and then this is a uh, 5 volt uh, converter that I use to power it 12 volts to 5 volts and then I run it off of a hard drive so this is a uh, USB to IDE um, converter and then this is the hard drive I use so there's lots of tutorials on how to set this up online I'm not going to go into details on how to set up the Raspberry Pi um, what I am going to do is go into details on how to set up um, the configure the Raspberry Pi install in the influx database, install Node-RED, and install Grafana, and how to set those all up. So this is a, doing a sudo update in a, a sudo app full upgrade which is recommended on a new install. Um, here I'm updating the repositories for influx so it grabs the latest version of influx database. And now committing that and then now installing the Influx database. This is greatly sped up, so um, it takes probably anywhere from about three to five x space speed up on these. So I uh, can't quite go into Influx yet. I gotta invoke um, invoke the service and set it up so it starts at boot every time. So now I'm in Influx creating a, a user root with password root and now I'm going to set up all the different uh, databases that I plan on uh, using. Um, right now in this demo I'm only going to use the uh, BMS database um, but these other ones will be for future use. And that's the BMS that just got set up. Exit out of that. And now we're um, setting things up um, to install Node-RED. This is a, a batch file um, that installs it for you. Understand you should be careful about running batch jobs on a Raspberry Pi that you know that they're from a known, known source because there could be some malicious things going on. So be careful when you do run batch files like that. Now I'm starting the Node-RED service and control C out of that and that sets up node red so it starts up at boot time every time and this is uh, doing a wget to grab um, the Grafana and uh, installing it directly off of the local disk and uh, configuring things to start the uh, process and to configure it so it comes up at boot time. And start the service, uh, or just check the status of the service. Let's see that it is up and running. Control C out of that. So this is the uh, the USB uh, RS-232 dongle that I'm using. And if you look, when I plug it in, uh, you do a LSUSB and it shows up there as that uh, Future Technology Devices International FTDI 
Um, now what I do, if you do a ls of slash dev, you'll see a, a TTY USB 0 there. Um, the problem with that is, is you install more uh, serial USB devices. Um, this, this first one that you plug in won't always come up as USB 0. So I go in and I look at the, uh, the product ID, the vendor ID, and the, uh, the serial number attributes for it. And then you can set up a rules file such that you can give, give the uh, device your own unique name. And that way as you add more um, USB serial devices, um, they, they'll, you'll have them defined as your own name because they, they could come up as USB 0, USB 1. Uh, whatever. So I'll reboot um, for that to take effect and now if I do list uh, slash dev you see that TTY BMS there as well as TTY USB 0. So uh, you can go in a browser on on any computer in your local area network and go to the address of your Raspberry Pi at port 1880 and now I'm importing um, the files you can get off of GitHub which has all the setup information for the, the BMS. Um, so this is the flow that uh, executes once a minute. It does that inject commands and then assembles, assembles a couple other commands and assembles all the data. And if you, you need to hit deploy anytime you make any changes to this. So hit deploy and then uh, I'll go up to the debug window and then I can see I've got a, a message output there. Um, so once once a minute when this fires, you can see basically the data that's getting shoved out to the Influx database. So I'll come back in to the Raspberry Pi and go into Influx. This step's not necessary, but it's basically to show you things are going well. List the databases um, using the BMS database. If I show measurements, there's only one measurement, uh, BMS, but under that measurement, BMS, there are um, numerous field keys. So those are all the field keys that get populated. And now I'll, I'll uh, display the data there. So um, three minutes have passed, so we've got uh, three data points so far in our database. So now I'll do the same with the address of the Raspberry Pi, except this time port 3000, which is the Grafana database. And you log in as admin. Uh, password admin and it'll prompt you to change your password. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I come in and set up data sources and our data source is an influx database and um, you have to set the URL, URL to be pointing to the local um, the local network node and uh, the name of the database there is BMS and have put in the basic authentication so uh, user root password root that's how we set it up and then we're doing a get of the data click test down there and it should come up the green banner so here I'm going to create um, a, a panel and um, the it's uh, BMS is the Measurement and then the field. I'm looking at the uh, battery voltage, and then I come over and uh, give it a name, title, battery voltage, and then uh, you can see some data points up there, but they're just coming up as points. Now I've got them as a staircase, which I didn't really want, so I'm going to shut that off, and then I'm going to do the stack. Uh, null connected, um, so that's kind of my preference is how they come up. Um, so you can see the whatever we've got, probably about four data points to right now. So you can see the the data up there. So that's basically how you set things up. Um, now I'm going to show you. I basically have that um, the setup that I showed you at the beginning. So we're going to import that. And you have to specify um, the data source on all of these and import. So um, those are for all the instruments. So right now we've only set up to click.
collect data in the database for that BMS. But you can see BMS current, BMS sum of voltages. Change the display for just the last half hour here. Um, BMS state of charge. Um, you see the four different battery voltages there. Four different cell voltages. Temperatures, so on and so forth. So anyway, I uh, hope this is useful. I'll go into, um, in further videos, go into the more details on how you um, configure some of the other devices. Um, but um, down, down below I list all the step-by-step -step instructions and then I also uh, have pointers to uh, um, GitHub where I have the repositories for the, uh, the uh, setup files for <coughs> um, Node-RED and for Grafana. So hope you find this useful and uh, stay tuned for some follow-on videos for some of the other devices I have set up on my, uh, on my battery. Thanks a lot.